Hello and welcome back to the Unity Basics series. In this episode, we're going to be learning how to create a game over screen. We're going to also cover how to access that menu via code and how to code a restart button. Let's get started. All right, let's jump right in. Last episode, we created a UI canvas and a UI manager script. And in this episode, we are going to be creating the game over screen. So let's first start by creating an empty game object and naming it game over screen. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this scales properly. So we're going to go into that rect transform and instead of having everything scale from the center, we want it to stretch and scale from all sides. And now next thing I need is a background for the game over screen. And a really easy way to do this is just to go into Unity's built-in UI system and go down to image. Since Unity has a default sprite for this, we can just go in and change the color and change the size and we're done. And now I'm just going back and checking the width and height of the canvas and I'm going to apply those numbers to the image. I will say though, I put 420 for the height and while that works for this exact resolution, I would honestly bump that up to 2000, especially if you're trying to scale this down to mobile in the future. So something to just keep in mind there. And lastly, I'm just going to add another text mesh pro element and type in game over. This is looking pretty bare bones right now, but I just wanted to show you how the basic functionality works with the script. And then I will go back and show you how to really make this look nice. But the next thing that we need to do is now we need to go back into our UI canvas and find our UI manager script so that we can now call the game over screen via code. So since our game over screen is inside a game object, here I'm going to create a public game object and then I'm going to assign the variable by naming it game over screen. And because it's a public game object, that means that this is going to show up inside of the Unity editor, but I will be able to manipulate it with my own variable via code. So now what I can do is in the awake method, which is called right before the start method, so right before the game actually starts, I can tell Unity, hey, please hide this screen, which is essentially what set active false means. So when the game starts, don't show the game over screen. So now I've told Unity when I don't want this screen to show, but when I do want it to show is when the player lives have gone to zero. So in the update method, which checks every single frame, I can say if the player lives are equal to zero. Now I want you to show the game over screen. So set active true. And now when I head back over to Unity, all I have to do is go to the UI canvas and then drag and drop the game over screen game object into its new slot. And we can rinse, wash, repeat this method with all different kinds of UI if we want to. And as you can see, once we start the game, we are not seeing our new game over screen. But once we actually decrease our lives to zero, then it pops up. Perfect. Now let's focus on making this actually look good. I'm thinking about going for a kind of underwater ocean theme. And one of my favorite resources to just get ideas for fonts is from Adobe Fonts. So I ended up finding this one that I really liked that was a little bit bubbly. So I activated it and then now I'm gonna go over to Figma and actually create a game over style image. I myself am a hostage to Adobe's monthly costs. However, a lot of these fonts are available for download in other places. So just keep that in mind. Now, a lot of people use Photoshop for their UI. However, Figma is free and I feel that you can get very similar effects with little effort. Essentially what I'm doing here is just creating um, depth. I'm adding inner shadows, drop shadows, adding gradients, and really trying to make this UI look very 3D and come alive. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make UI like this, Drop a comment below, I'd be happy to make one, but just for the purposes of this video, I wanted to just kind of zoom through and show you what's possible. Now heading back over to Unity, I'm going to create a new folder and label it UI, and I'm going to drop this in there. Uh, for reference, I did end up exporting this at about three times the size, just to make sure that the resolution looks good. Now, if it looks scrunched, don't worry, we're gonna fix that in a second. But in order to be able to use this in our UI, I have to change this from a default image to a sprite. 
And now I'm just going to go over to my Game Over screen, Parent Object, go to New UI, and then select Image. And in that section where it says Sprite, I'm just going to drag and drop my new image in there. And now as soon as we add it in, we can tell that it's still a little bit scrunched, so we're going to go down to that selection where it says Preserve Aspect. This setting is just going to keep your image at the same ratio, which is really nice. However, I am accidentally about to show you that you can still kind of mess this up if the scale is wrong, but I'm going to scale this up to 2.5 and then move it up the page. Now, if you're a little bit confused on how the rec transform actually works, uh, right now its default is set to the center, so as the screen scales it's going to take the center point of the image and kind of scale out from there. However, I really want to anchor it to the top. This is personal preference, but if I do release this to mobile, then I think that's a really good way to do that. Next up, we have to create our restart button. Now, bear with me here, I'm gonna have to flip back and forth a little bit. We have three main pieces of functionality attached to this button, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you all through it. Now, buttons allow us to call certain functions from within a script. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my Lives Manager script. I'm going to create a new public void function and name it Reset UI. I'm going to set the player lives to be equal to one, and I'm going to set the game over screen to be hidden. I'm going to set it to false. Let's save that script and go back on over to Unity. Now I need to connect this function to the actual button. So this is where it gets a little bit weird. Since this is on the UI manager script, I'm going to drag in the canvas game object into that slot because that's where this script is accessible from. And then I'm going to select from the menu the script that I just created. Now that I've reset the lives and the UI, now I need to go into the platform movement script and reset the platform to its original position. So I'm going to be naming this public void reset platform. Now let's go plug it back into Unity. Now we're gonna follow the same logic here. I'm gonna go to the restart button and just add another on-click event, except for this time, I'm going to drag in the ground object because that's where the platform movement script is located. And I'm going to call that function reset platform. Now when we go to hit play, we can see that it looks mostly good. However, we're missing one very important element, which is our player because in a previous episode, we destroyed the player as soon as it hit a box. So now we actually need to create a game manager to respawn that player once uh, the user clicks on the restart button. So what I've just done is created a new folder just for prefabs, and I'm just going to be taking my player object, dragging and dropping it into the prefabs folder so I can use that to spawn it in later. Now what I need to do is I'm going to create a new empty game object and I'm going to be naming it game manager and I'm just going to be adding and attaching a game manager script. Now the game manager script is going to be pretty simple. All I need to do is create a public game object and I'm going to be calling it player to spawn. This is where I'm going to be putting my prefab and then I just need to create a public void function. I'm going to be calling it spawn player and then I'm just going to be telling it to instantiate that prefab. And now going back into Unity, all I have to do is kind of plug and chug here. So I'll just go to my game manager object and then I'm going to be dragging and dropping in my new player prefab. And finally, the last piece of this puzzle is to go back to the restart button and add in the last on click method that we want to call. And for this one, since the script is on the game manager object, we're going to be dragging in the game manager and then we're going to be calling that function spawn player. And now when we press the restart button, we can see that all of our functionality is working. And lastly, let's replace that button UI with something new and fresh. So I ended up going back to Figma and sketched out this quick little button that would match the UI. And now going back into Unity, I'm going to repeat some of the same processes. I'm gonna make sure that this is a sprite. And instead of that default image on the button, I'm going to replace it with this one. Once again, I'm going to make sure that my preserved aspect ratio is checked. And now I can start playing around with the font. Two really good rules to follow for UI design is one, 
your button should always be at least 40 pixels tall, and two, if you have the choice between a legible font and an artistic font, always choose the legible font. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.